Okay, it's been about a mm, week and a bit since I've installed my roof console. I'm just going to give you a, a quick rundown. Fitting wise, the gap between the roof and the console itself is good. It's like that all the way around. Uh, a little bit of a gap on the front, but obviously you don't normally look there. As stated with the previous video, when I installed the rear mount, I used bolts instead of screws. Those screws I have reused for the microphone holder. They're approximately 10mm in thread length. I'll put the microphone on this side because it's an ICOM radio. And I'm glad I have because I've already hit my head on this three times, no, four times getting in the vehicle. I tend to hit my head on this point here. Now, in the instructions it's pretty good. It tells you to, when mounting the cable holder that you allow enough clearance for the visor. If you don't have that there, when I'm driving I can easily grab the mic, I can find where it's located, where it sits in its housing and it's easy enough to put the cable back. The cable can just hang down like that. That's not too much of an issue. I had it like that because it's less obstruction with the rear view mirror. You can see the top of this bit in the rear view mirror. Other than that, it's okay. As stated in another video when I showed the radio how it's housed in there. The only thing that's holding that in is just the sheer friction between the rubber and the radio because it's a tight fit. I wouldn't say it's exactly uh, foolproof though. It's only got double sided tape on the inside to level it and sort of hold it there. But with this hot weather that double sided tape gets soft and it can slip. This radio comes with a bracket. I'm going to mount it underneath this. I'm going to have two screws underneath here to hold that bracket. I'm going to look at doing something like that to help secure this radio better. Over corrugation and so on, it could work its way loose. Lighting, it's a little bit confusing, but when you hook it up with the doors open as is, these lights will come on there and obviously at the back. You cannot turn them off individually in this mode. All right. You have to shut the doors, wait until the timers go out, i.e. as soon as you start the car. And then you can use these lights individually whilst driving. But when the doors are open, all the lights come on and you can't do anything about it. Except use a switch at the end here to turn them on and off. I haven't checked the lighting of a night, but I've checked it at dawn. There's limited light. It doesn't throw the light as much to the sides because of the angle, but they show a clearer light as a result of being LED. That is about it. Uh, in relation to me hitting my head on there, it was a good idea not having the microphone mounted on this side. I haven't come close anywhere along here when I've been forward driving on the weekend. If anything, I hit the grab handle and that was it. Passenger wise, my wife said it was fine. Um, the other mate thought it was a bit enclosed in. He's a bit taller though, but obviously being that right next to his head, you'd probably get that feeling. Overall, I'm happy with it. The only thing I didn't like was how the radio just sits in there and the small screws which they used on the rear mount. They used longer ones on the front mount. We'll see how that goes, but you put a lot of items in here, there's a lot of weight on here just for these two little screws in there, hence why I used bolts and used the screws for the microphone holder. The whole lot cost 460 thereabouts. It was about 450 for the console and $11 for the insert. And that is it. Not quite it, I'll just show you the other side. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap here. Uh, there's a little bit of adjustment there, but I'm not going to worry about it. Visibility of the radio. That's the angle there, and it's hard to see the screen, so it obviously you have to preset it. Uh, as I said, to grab the mic, it's just a matter of I can just push that up, and I can bring that down. So I'm talking on it. When I finish, I can feel where the clip is, 
and then I can just tick that, tuck that back up in there, and that's it. And I can access that without breaking my shoulder. I've got my winch controller in there. That's about it at this stage. Okay, that's it.